culture that has become very toxic a lot of times there's so much hate and especially in these uh, in this in these times of social media the digital age people have become much much more comfortable with fault finding and there's so many people who have created a preoccupation and they have created made it their passion to find fault with anybody and everybody in fact it's what in our modern day uh, ling lingo is called or referred to as cancel culture cancel culture so allow me just a few minutes of your time to just speak into this very, very important subject of our time, the futility of fault finding, hashtag cancel culture, the futility of fault finding, hashtag cancel culture. My name is Jesse Mwai, and thank you so much for allowing me a few minutes of your time. Um, the most useless, in fact, let me begin by making an advisory here that I want to use some strong terminology and some strong faces try, just trying to embellish what I'm trying to communicate to us. But the most useless and the most futile preoccupation any individual, any human being can ever engage in is the preoccupation of fault finding. Hashtag cancel culture. Yet it is, it has become very, very attractive in our time. So many people have actually even just opened uh, social media handles simply for the purpose of fault finding and cancelling people, cancel culture, pointing your fingers at that one, that institution, somebody you don't like, somebody said this, or that pastor there, that church there, is always one thing or the other. Let me give you a few re reasons why this is so easy. It's the easiest preoccupation yet the most useless on this at the same time is number one, that fault finding is so easy. You don't have to be a genius. Fault finding, you don't, you don't, you don't even need extra education for it. Anybody can do it. It's actually a lazy man's preoccupation because we don't live in a perfect world. Nobody's perfect, including yourself. No church is perfect. No individual is perfect. If you're looking for fault, I assure you, you will find fault even in the very best of people. It is the easiest preoccupation. It's a lazy man's uh, preoccupation. But then secondly, Fault finding is, is, uh, is very destructive and many, many times uh, uh, people have been destroyed by people who, who, don't, who did not even know them because somebody just picked up an issue, they went on social media and began bashing that person, that individual, calling them names, saying all kinds of things. You have never even met that person and you end up destroying a life. Did you know that in some cases people have even taken up their own, they have taken their own lives because of the, of, of the hate culture? And because somebody just came at them and they criticized them and they, they, they threw words at them and they caused a riot against that individual. And some people have actually ended up taking their own lives because of cancel culture, because of fault finders and because of haters. But then, but then also, understand this, fault finding is such a useless preoccupation because it does not add value to you. The fault finder, you who is a fault finder, you who is a hater, it doesn't add value. It doesn't make you a better person, actually. It doesn't add any value to you by fault finding, by finding fault in other people. You don't become a better person. If anything, you become a very bitter person. But then why is also a very useless preoccupation is because the world will never become a better place because of fault finders. If anything, fault finders remove, they subtract to the betterment of this world. They don't add value at all. They act, instead, they subtract. They subtract. Well, let me also tell you something about when you become a fault finder. These are the consequences. There are always consequences. First and foremost, you will never be happy. As long as you're somebody who is preoccupied with hating, your cancel culture, calling people out, insulting people, and trying to cause a riot against institutions and what have you, you will never, I promise you, it doesn't matter even if you're born again, you will never be happy. You will always be depressed. Your, you'll always, uh, your hands will always be dirty. Your mind will be, full, will, will be filled with negativity. Your heart will become dark and callous. You will become unsympathetic to everyone uh, because you have chosen to be a fault finder. So you will never be happy. It is not for your well-being and you will never become a better person. The second thing that you must understand when you are a fault finder, I promise you, you will struggle with mental health issues. One of the fastest ways to become depressed 
is be preoccupied with negativity and toxicity and you know, that, that person did this, that person did that, or that person is not a good person. You will, be, you will struggle with mental health issues, anxiety, depression, and you wonder why you're struggling and your heart is so heavy all the time. It's because you are a fault finder. Let me finish by saying this. Instead, why don't you turn it around? Become that person, become that woman, become that man who instead of taking away, you add value to people. Find good things about this. There's always something to celebrate uh, where people are concerned, where institutions are concerned. Be that one person who encourages, who uses your time to encourage, to build up other people, to say good things to other people, to encourage others. I promise you, when you do that, when you refresh others, you yourself will also be refreshed. You, you will find when you're kind to others, people will also be kind to you. When you're generous with others, people will also be generous in return to you. That's the way to live in this world. Do not be a fault finder. It's the easiest thing. Instead, be that one person who will make a difference in other people's lives and may the Lord bless you. Please share this with as many people and especially those who may have been caught up in this whole thing of fault finding and cancel culture. Share, share it with them and uh, we trust that maybe God will speak to them. God bless you and have a wonderful time.